All right, guys, so what can I grow on the south side of my property, which is pretty much going to be the full sun side of your property that's always going to get full sun, no matter what. If it's in the, if it's in the winter, it's going to be a little bit lower in the, in the sky. It might be blocked by maybe a neighbor's house or a building, but if you're pretty much out in the open, then it's going to be out in the full sun for most of the year, and especially in the summer when it's the sun's directly overhead, then everything here on the south side of the property gets pretty much blasted with sun and gets sun all day long. So let's take a look at some of these trees I have over here on this side and let's see what kind of production that we can get out of them. So let's start here in the corner. In the corner of the property here, I've got a, a lemon tree, a citrus tree. And I'm gonna go, um, you don't see a lot of fruit on the outside here because I've picked a lot of the outside. This is the neighbor's side, so they pick a lot of these lemons too. But we'll go in the interior here and we'll we'll check out the production on on this lemon tree and see if we're indeed getting good production from this being out in the full sun. So you can see this this tree is pretty big now and it's it's here on the corner, so it kind of starts the south side of the property. So we've got this lemon tree here. And then that kind of bleeds over here into a pomegranate. Which the wind got this one. Wind got this one yesterday. I'm gonna have to kind of stake him back up, but he is just beautiful, beautiful growth. Let me show you how how green and beautiful this growth is. And big. I mean you can see this is a big a big pomegranate, and the fruit now is just now starting to come on. So as far as production goes, is it gonna be productive? Yes, it's gonna be extremely productive. It's just now starting to put on its flowers and its fruit. So let me show you the, the sheer quantity that this thing's gonna have. And it's just, just got going, so. Eventually this will be completely covered in flowers and that's going to pull all the fruit down over to the ground anyway. So this is a white pomegranate and man is he he looking good other than the the wind got him yesterday so I'm going to stake him back up. And then right above that I've got a Shangri-La mulberry which is quite large. I mean it's pretty good size tree and it's a canopy tree. And you see I am training this one to go up and above the rest of these trees so this will be like a mid-sized tree it, I've got the the full-size tree here that yeah. sorry about that drop the camera so you see up here I've got this pine tree this giant pine tree and this is the upper canopy tree and then below that I've got the I've got the mulberry here which is just beautiful and then underneath that, I've got the pomegranate. And then underneath that, I've got a full-size, pretty much a full-size peach. So let's get up close to this one. So you guys can see the production. This thing is just loaded. Just completely loaded full of peaches. So this is a tropic snow white peach. And you can see it's just got these chains, chains and chains of fruit on its branches. Just branch after branch after branch of these beautiful peaches. And this one being a little bit more sensitive to the to the sun being a white peach. This one does really good underneath the canopy of these other trees. And these do ripen up. Oh wow, look at all these, wow. Wow, that is a lot of production. And you see I'm underneath the canopy of the mulberry. So the mulberry just takes the edge off and keeps this tree nice and cool. You see the mulberry here, you can see I've making it a single trunk tree. And then you see the pine tree right behind it with the dragon fruit growing up the pine tree. <clears throat> so 
So we've got this big, beautiful peach. It's just completely full of fruit. And just looks really good. Really, really, really good. Okay, then next we've got a, a mango tree. And this is a this is a prom prom chimea, I believe it's pronounced. And this one's gotten quite large. So this one, let me see if I can get to the the top here. So that mango comes right about to up here. And then there's a low quat right behind it. So you see I've got that low quat, that giant low quat right there. Let's see if I can back up without dropping the camera again. So now you see I've got the the peach and then the low quats here, and then the mango is roughly right about here. And I'll go show you the blooms on this one too. So this outer edge here got a little bit nipped from the cold. So the mango got a little bit of cold nip and the star fruit got a little bit of cold nip. But now that the star fruit's got its new leaves on it, because I don't protect any of these trees. So now you see he's got all of his new growth back and there we go. And this is a big tree too. So this star fruit has gotten quite big. It's got these big branches on it. They're kind of poking out here in the sun now. So that star fruit, I don't know if you can see it. It's shaking now. It's pretty big out here in the full sun. Well, as much full sun as it's going to get. So, I mean, you see how these are layered back as we go. I mean, this is full-blown jungle now. Full-blown food forest. I mean, I can barely see barely see in. Okay, then the next plant is a pineapple guava or a feoa. And this one's gotten quite big too. So this is this is a tree, single trunk tree. And this one is just now starting to bloom. You see it's got all of his buds. And eventually this will be completely full of these blooms that look like this. So that probably won't focus. And it will be completely covered in fruit. You can see how many buds are on this, on this plant. It's just ridiculous. Okay, then we jump down to a dragon fruit. I've got a dragon fruit cactus that is growing on an old cactus. <laughs> so we've got cactus down here in Arizona, and when they die, they leave a skeleton. And I thought it would be cool to plant that skeleton and then put that dragon fruit back on it. Kind of re redoing it. <laughs> and then next, I've got a mandarin. And I'll have to show you this one on the other side, too. This one's just chock full of fruit, too. And this one produces almost like a, like a grapefruit. And this one looks really, really good. And it's small, and it's just super productive. Then next we've got an apricot. And this thing... I mean, I don't even know what to do with this thing anymore. This thing's huge. This thing is the next canopy tree... And I have never seen so many, so many fruit on a tree. Like this tree, I mean, look at this. I have never seen so many fruit on a tree. And every single branch is like that too. On this entire, entire tree. And eventually it's going to get yanked over to the ground. And it is, I mean, look at that. Look at the amount of apricots that are on this on this tree. So yeah, it does get blasted in the summertime. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And then the next one back, I don't even know if you can see it, is a nectarine. And that thing's just huge. It's a shade tree now. And he's just leafing out now. Then the next, we've got a Barbados cherry is kind of buried in here now, but he looks pretty good. He's getting all of his new 
new leaves and blooms so this one should be fruiting soon and then next to it we've got a, a beer's lime which I tell you what this is the most productive tree I've ever owned like this thing is pumps out limes all year long and so many that I just don't know what to do with them like this puts on a gazillion gazillion limes just by the by the hundreds and then as soon as these are ready the next ones are ready and then as soon as those are ready the next ones are coming on so this seems to be like ever bearing because it'll always have like really good sized fruit on it at the same time it has all these little baby fruits so this beer's lime is probably one of my biggest citrus and it's also one of the most productive okay guys so that's my front yard there lime barbados cherry apricot star fruit mango pineapple guava lemon and then as it continues down to the backyard that's completely different plants the majority of those are mangoes and have gotten big really big actually way above my wall all of these and i've got some a bunch of really good blood oranges back here so i'm just going to pause it for a minute and i'm going to jump back into the interior of the yard real quick all right so now i'm on the interior of this of this lemon tree and now you can see kind of how big all these fruits are i mean i can't even put my my hand around that that lemon and they're pretty much all that way and they hold, they hold a long time too. They hold really late into like July. So I usually don't pick them. But let's see if I can get up underneath here and show you guys. They're just everywhere. Just lemons everywhere big they're all big look at that one that one is enormous and they just they hold well like these aren't loose at all and they'll keep their juice they'll keep their juice for a long time too before they start drying out but yeah lots of lemons lots of big lemons left and i've already picked like 500 of these things So I showed you the, the pomegranate already. I'm like literally crawling, <laughs> crawling through here. Okay, so here's the mulberry from the inside. And you can see all of, all of its fruits here on the, on the interior also. So it puts up that nice canopy and then it ripens all the fruit underneath here i mean i'm telling you it's a it's like 10 degrees cooler underneath here it's just beautiful then let's see if i can get around here to this side this is the back side of the peach you can see how dark it is in here pretty dark and then all the fruit is protected in here in the interior and yes it will ripen because <laughs> the tree is gathering all that energy on the outside from the from the Sun so this is now I'm underneath the prom promchimea mango and I'm underneath the loquat which is way above me Let's see if I can get back around here I'll show you the see if I can show you the blooms the mango blooms on this one they're just now starting but it's got a lot of bracts 
got a lot of flower bracts. And see they're also in here in the interior where it's a little bit cooler. So it's weird. It's like the tree keeps all the shell on the outside protected and then it knows the fruit where it's nice and cool in here where that stuff's not going to get not going to get burnt up. All right, so here's the pineapple guava. The blooms are just amazing. And another cool thing about the blooms is you can eat the eat the petals. You can eat this part of the flower and they taste like gummy bears and it doesn't affect the production of the of the plant. So when these start flowering heavily, I'll come out here and and eat some of these flowers. Okay, then we got the mandarin. Which will be super heavy, super heavy fruited. And then of course we got the apricot, which it's just it's just loaded everywhere. In the shade, in the sun. Doesn't seem to much matter on this one. And then I've got the big nectarine above me. And then the lime. Flash right over here to the star fruit real quick because I want to point this out real quick. So a lot of you guys, you freak out when you see the yellow leaves on your star fruit. That's it's leaf cycling. So that means it's going to get new leaves soon. So this is when people freak out and they stop watering their star fruit, thinking that they've overwatered it and that it's going to lose all of its leaves. But in fact, it's going to be flushing all new growth, as you can see, it's doing right here right so if you don't water them this will die and you thought that you overwatered it so star fruit they like a lot of water i'm telling you they do especially if you're wanting nice fruit like these if you're wanting a nice fruit like that well then you've got to you've got to give star fruit some water guys i'm sorry These are just beautiful fruits. So no, I'm not losing the tree. It's gonna go into new growth here soon and produce more. So that's just a little side note on starfruit, just so you guys know uh, what's going on with the starfruit tree. All right, guys, so what can I plant on my south side? Well, there it is. There's a the little lineup of what I have in the front, and then it continues, like I said, into the back food, food forest into the back, and those plants all change into kind of different plants as we go back there, although I do have some duplicates back here too but yeah it's full on uh full on jungle back there now <laughs> all right guys thank you for watching